Hey, that's my wife. <laughs> Tell me about the placement of Sweet Caroline at the start. I mean, did you choose that? How did this song become the one that's like, yeah, this is how we're going to kick things off? You know, it was uh, being behind the scenes of the music process and the soundtrack was so exciting. And I had the most incredible team. You know, Netflix trusted me to pick my writing partner. I sent the script to Justin Tranter. He fell in love with it, with Cassie, with the message that she represented. And we jumped into this journey together. And of course, we wrote original songs, but we also got the chance to do two really cool covers. And we knew that, you know, the first cover was going to be the first time that anyone sees Cassie. However, we wanted to, to kind of begin her evolution because when we meet her, she isn't singing original songs just yet. You know, that takes some time for her to find the bravery to kind of bring her honesty and truth to the microphone. And we also wanted to set the stage that she was singing at a bar at a military town. And she also had to sing a song that kind of catered to that audience. And Sweet Caroline was just perfect. Like you said, it's the perfect song. Anytime it comes on, everyone wants to jump in and sing. It's kind of celebratory. And we did a version that was kind of sexy and kind of rock and roll and very Cassie. And it was, it was one of the most fun scenes that we had shooting at the bar and singing and shooting Sweet Caroline. I will be honest, for as much as I am excited for all the original songs and I'm like waiting for those all to drop on streaming, I've been waiting for this cover of Sweet Caroline to come out because like it is, it's just, it's great. It's so, it's, I also just have a love for that so song. happy. Yeah. And we really worked a lot on the vocal because I wanted it to sound kind of unique and different. And um, I think it, it really came to life in a good way. It did, it did. Now you mentioned, I mean, this is, it has been a journey for Purple yes. Hearts. It's been a long time coming. Okay. It is now finally going to the world. Have you processed like how, what, what emotional state are you in at this point? I don't know if I fully processed. It's such an interesting world that we live in as artists, because like you said, this has been years in the making. For me, it's been five years. For one of our producers, Les, it's been 10 years since he first heard on the radio the story of military contract marriages that inspired this story. And um, I've poured my heart and soul into this film and, and I've been involved in it in a way that I never had before as an artist. And so it's surreal because all the moments and the scenes and the songs that I have dreamt of for five years are shot, they're edited, they're in the movie. And now we get to kind of release our our baby into the world and um i had the premiere two nights ago and my mom described seeing me as she felt like i was almost floating and liz and i kept saying liz my director and my partner and everything in this that she kind of felt like she was here but she wasn't it kind of all feels a little bit out of body i think so i don't know when it's going to you know hit us that it's happening right well I, what i love about cassie is she's just i would argue if not the most, one of the most mature roles you've had to date. I love oh, her just as like a fleshed out person. I, tell me about playing that aspect because she's so different than anything you've done. And so she's really this unique person. So tell me, just tell me about getting into getting into her mind and bringing her to life. Cassie was my greatest challenge as an actor to date. And I, I admire her so much. I'm so grateful to Liz, who was such a fighter for truth and honesty in every aspect of this film. Of course, the core of it is our performances as actors. And, you know, we would not quit until the words that came out of my mouth felt like mine. And um, that's kind of what happened. And I had the honor of being able to live with Cassie, help create her for four years before I kind of physically became her. And we worked so hard to make sure that Cassie was so unique and so specific and so different from Sophia and my mannerisms and the way that I walked, the way that I spoke, the way that I carried myself on stage. I, you know, for months did an immense amount of research on every aspect of her life that would have informed the woman that Cassie is from immigration to um, the immigrant experience in San Diego, to type one diabetes, to the military, the military culture, to Oceanside. I journaled her entire life from her first memory to the day that we met her. And it felt like I had in a way lived life in her shoes and seen the world through her eyes. And I think that allowed me to really dive into her skin because I was so scared I just wanted to do her story justice because it needed to be told so vulnerably. And um, I think Cassie being as fearless as she is reminded me that I had to be fearless too. 
and to just let go and dive into this role. What was the most, the, what was the hardest part of her to find, right? Cause you have to find all these pieces of a character. What yeah. was that one that was like, you really, it took a minute to get there. And then once it finally locked, you were like, okay, I've got, I've got her. You know, we're, we're very different. Uh, I think we're very similar in a lot of ways. Like her passion for justice is very similar to mine. Her love of music, of course. But Cassie is like, she's messy. You know, she's unpredictable. She's tough. She's unafraid to say exactly what she thinks when she thinks it, regardless of the consequences. And Liz really tried to kind of shake because I'm, I'm more polished. I'm more put together. I think through things much more. Um, and Cassie is not that. She's like the antithesis of me. So Liz had to kind of like shake that out of me in order to become Cassie. And of course, even physically, the transformation helped as well because I had tasks that I got to pick, which was so cool. You know, her clothes, her style that I was very involved in, in picking to make sure it was like kind of rock and roll, kind of an ode to the 70s, kind of tomboyish, not very feminine. So I think all of that helped to really bring her to life. And then of course, the core of it was her worldview, which had to be so different from Nick's and so different from Luke's. And that came from, I think, the research that I did in the, the deep dive that I made into Cassie. But I think I, I had to surrender. And it was one of the most beautiful experiences that I've had as an actor. I, I just love her as a character so much. I'm glad you brought up the tattoos because when I saw them, I was like, she, she doesn't nope. have, do, does she? And I was, I was really trying to think about it. And I was like, no, I've, I've seen her arms. So it was, a, it was a weird experience of all yeah. things. Yeah, I mean, yes, you are very different. A lot of ways similar though, as you said as well. I Because one scene that stuck out in my brain is the reaction she has when her song is really starting to go viral. It's, mm -hmm. it's her lyrics, it's, it's really taking off. And I was watching it and I couldn't help but wonder if that is just like past Sophia, like when your when your music really started taking yeah. off and really started to hit, I mean, did that reaction? Did yeah. that experience more of that as well? Um, so definitely, yeah. it, it is cool to be able to use your own experiences and, and, and to draw from that as an actor. But yeah, I think you're right, past Sophia, because for instance, the first time that I heard my song on the radio um, is kind of what Cassie is feeling too, um, which is really really beautiful to kind of live that through her eyes. I just was watching it and I was like, you can't, you can't convince me that that's not like a little bit real Sophia, just kind of remembering when, when her yeah. songs were first taking off. Very, very true. One of the other things I love about the story is just the commentary on the healthcare system, the reasoning behind why this marriage happens. And like you said, Cassie is blunt. She just says these things and it's that like health insurance, the system blows. Like there's just no getting around it is health insurance really can be a hard system for people to maneuver. Talk to me about the discussions that happen there. How like, how kind of pessimistic did you want to be versus, you know, is it pessimism? Is it realism? What kind of discussions happened in getting that particular piece of the story? I would say that what we strive for was realism and I hope that we accomplished that. It was incredibly important to me and Liz to be very specific with type one diabetes in particular. I am so proud that our lead character is a type one diabetic because diabetes is far too underrepresented in film and media. And um, in the process of becoming Cassie, I wanted to study what it means to be a type one diabetic, what the community goes through, what the day-to-day -day life entails. And so I, of course, spoke to multiple medical professionals and I spoke to one young woman in particular, whose name is Laura, who has a, a social media account called Not Your Type. And um, she spoke to me in depth and we had multiple calls about truly the injustices within the system and just, it's heartbreaking. And that's what we tried to tell. We tried to tell her story and the story of countless type one diabetics who quite literally, Andy, they can't afford insulin. And without insulin, they die. It's as simple as that. And it's, and the insurance doesn't cover the insulin that they need. And so they're forced to do these things in desperation, like a contract military marriage because they need to live. And so I hope that our story was told with um, the realism and the gravity that the situation you know, requires. I also want to get into the realism of just the relationship itself, yeah. right? Because what I really enjoyed, and it was something that I will, I will be 100% honest with you, I was worried about at first, and then it came through because you've got a very liberal woman who right. is now in a contract marriage with a conservative man. He calls her a lib, he calls her a snowflake. Yeah, snowflake. And what yep. I loved 
is that she calls him on it every single time. At no point in this movie does she's like, well, like he says terrible things, but like he's pretty, oh, no. like I can see what he's saying. From the first conversation, she, she says toxic masculinity, misogynism, like she calls him out from the very beginning. And it, it just, I think we really wanted to make these two people as different as possible to make their worldviews incredibly clear so that the fact that these two people could see each other for more than just that, more than just politics, more than just red and blue, made it that much more powerful. And um, we had a lot of fun. And I think we dedicated most of our time to making this relationship as real as possible. And, you know, there were so many moments of conflict, but then also a lot of moments of levity and realness and kind of sexiness and flirtiness that was always tied into the their differing worldviews. But um, it's such a beautiful story and such a powerful story. And um, we really just kind of surrendered to, to Cassie and Luke. It's great. And it's at no point is she like fundamentally changed from who she is as a person. She doesn't no, neither come is around. She. That's yeah. not realistic either. They're not changed. They just lead with compassion for the first time. Right. And see each other past their differences and realize that, that perhaps, perhaps we have more that connects us than divides us. Absolutely. I have to ask, were you bummed not being able to sing with Nick? Because like, we know he has a voice. Like, we, we saw you know, Cinderella. Was, and I talked about that. I was like, it's so it would have been so cool. It just wouldn't have made sense in the story. Right. But who knows one day? <laughs> well, I want I want to get into the songwriting as well, because, yes. you know, it, these are original songs that yes. you penned. I, I I'm always interested in the technical aspects of it in the sense of like you're writing these songs through the lens of a character. Because yes. again, Cassie and Sophia are different people. So when you approach songwriting as Sophia, you're approaching it one way, I imagine. And when you're songwriting for Cassie, it has to be. So how do you kind of find that line of like, it's for a character, but still you like, it just seems like it'd be really, really challenging. I mean, I was terrified. My mom <laughs> I called her crying multiple times. You know, I was like, who, who thought that I could do this? Who trusts me to do this? I've never written a soundtrack before. Um, but believe it or not, Andy, it was a very similar experience because in order, you know, when I write songs as Sophia, I dive into my heart to speak or sing my truths. And in order to write songs for Cassie and to bring her story to life, I had to dive into her heart. And um, I had been living with this person, with this young woman for four years, with her story, with her thoughts, her fears, with their love story in my heart. And so I think in the process of writing the music, it helped me to become Cassie that much more. And I drew from her and I drew from Cassie and from Luke in order to bring these songs to life. And um, it was such a beautiful experience. We wrote the entire soundtrack, believe it or not, in one week. Whoa, yeah. what? one week we wrote hate the way was the first song that we wrote and hate the way i had started writing a couple of weeks before i had most of the lyrics on my phone because that was to me exactly what cassie and luke felt like she hated how much she loved him like she did not want to love this man but she couldn't help it because her heart was no longer hers it was his that was the first song that we wrote and it really set the tone for cassie and for the loyal because First of all, it was important for Cassie to be very different from Sophia musically, sonically. And, you know, she's indie, she's rock. I've never done something like that before. When we recorded Hate the Way, Justin was like, you've never sung like that before. I think we found Cassie's voice and it was so thrilling. Then we wrote Blue Side of the Sky, which really sets the tone, I think, for our story and for our hero, Cassie. And she has that tattooed on her forearm. And the lyric says, I'll never touch the blue side of the sky because she spent her whole life fighting, fighting for justice within an unjust system for whether it's immigration, healthcare, for her dreams. And no matter how close it is, she can never touch the sky. And then um, we wrote, I didn't know, which was magical to bring to life. And our hardest one to write was come back home. We had to write two, I think we wrote almost three different versions of the song. And the last one was you know, the no brainer. It was the one that stole all of our hearts. Well, it is all gorgeous, Sophia. Unfortunately, that is my time, but I, oh. as always, could talk to you for an hour. Thank but you, so I, much. you you are undeniable in this movie, and I love it for you. And I'm just so excited for people to see it. Thank you so much for taking the time today. Thank I really, really so appreciate much. it. Thank you for your kindness and your generosity, always. Mwah.